the topic at hand, linguistic creativity, is one that has haunted me for a couple of years now. Um, because, as you know, I come from a construction grammar background, and we're really good at constructions and entrenchment of constructions. And there's a claim that it's constructions all the way, and it's all stored. And that does explain quite a lot. But for some time now, I've had the hunch that particularly in usage-based construction grammar, we put almost too much focus on what is stored on the constructions. And we focus a little bit, not enough, on the constructs, on the individual utterances. And nowhere is this as pressing, pressing as when it comes to linguistic creativity. Um, so this is my view um, of the topic. It's an emergent field. A couple of colleagues are currently publishing on this. Um, and you're more than welcome all to contribute. And I look already very much forward to your questions on the topic. What I will do today is give a very brief introduction to construction grammar as a theory of language. And I will ask the question, how can construction grammar deal with linguistic creativity? And almost more importantly, what interesting aspects and questions does linguistic creativity raise for construction grammar? Some of the solutions are going to lie in looking at networks, and that means individual cognitive networks, um, as well as social aspects of social networks. Um, I will argue that conceptual blending plays play a huge role in all of this. And um, I follow Mark Turner and Jill Fouconnier in this, in thinking that perhaps it is the only way of how we combine constructions, and that this is a very crucial, important mechanism for individual constructional creativity. My examples will come from literary language jokes, multimodal constructs that I hope you will find interesting and hopefully also pertinent to the topic. 